Audemars Piguet no longer makes any watches anyone wants. And neither does Paddock. <laughs> Boom, watch fan. What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris watch shop. I am Michael. I am not the curator of the Theo and Harris watch shop. Glad, glad you said that. Otherwise, they wouldn't have figured. It's a disclaimer. They wouldn't have been able to deduce that. If anybody's <laughs> looking at that JB Champion watch at the bottom, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> that, that. It, it's it's amazing. People can hardly believe that it takes one full person. <laughs> to it. It's um it's actually not a very uh, it, it's a difficult job in the sense that like there's a lot of prerequisite knowledge that needs to go into doing it. Right. But the actual act of curating a watch shop is like the most fun least hectic thing you could possibly do. All you do is look at toys, literally expensive watches all day, and then say, cool, I want to buy and then sell that one. I think that one. one looks nice. It's the best job. Next topic, let's talk mm -hmm. about vintage watches for a second. For on sure. On the topic of making fun of me for being the curator, what do you think, what is your favorite watch currently in the shop right now, in the Theo and Harris shop? It's kind of a layup, so I'm going to give you two. Yes. One is the day date, the roulette wheel day date. Yeah. Incredible. What, what reference? 50, uh, 6511. 6511. Yep. I've obviously photographed it. It's incredible. That's but incredible a roulette wheel on a Rolex yep. mixed in with, if you scroll up, the honeycomb Rolex that was just listed. I know. I, I knew you were uh, gonna love that. Yeah. The honeycomb the honeycomb Rolex is something that totally blew my mind. Mm -hmm. Um you do it's, it's an uncommon reference and it's sixty one oh seven. Um but it's like a it's like a sector dial with honeycomb in the middle with mm -hmm. the super warm patina. That is an unbelievable watch. And the applied indices that are really sharp and aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. I love those. And you find those on old Oyster precisions and honeycombs and stuff like that. I love those. And then even look at the bezel, how thin that, that bezel is. This is a very odd Rolex. Man. It is, it is. That's a very odd Rolex. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of my favorite watches in the shop right now is the 16030 Golden Linen. This that is an unbelievable is watch. Uh, they did make gold linen dials uh, in, in an early date just. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a gold linen dial. This is a silver linen dial, yep. which was more common uh, and more desirable than the gold linen, that actually developed this warm i don't even it's like yellow whatever but like like patina that mm -hmm. is just it's, it's sun kissed i mean it's absolutely beautiful i love this watch as soon as i saw it i knew i had to have it yep. i'm so uh, uh thrilled to be wearing it and um and i'm sure that we're going to ship it off to a fantastic home uh presumably in asia you know you know what's so funny our asian the, the asian market and our asian clients mm -hmm. have the largest appetite for like rare and interesting rolex under like that aren't sport i think really? it's because just generally culturally they don't have this obsession with these big watches yeah yeah, so yeah. so I I ship off more watches that I that I that I think that was a good one to yeah. Asia than anywhere else in the world. Really? Uh, yeah, because hmm. look at all the interesting details you're not paying a big premium on. True. You know, you're paying a $1,000 premium or a $2,000 premium, mm -hmm. uh, be but because the watch is 34 or 36 as opposed to 40, you know... Smaller it, market. Otherwise, right? Yeah, otherwise or it would market. be a huge, a huge increase in, in, in price. Um, again, Honeycomb, the Seamaster. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of great watches. There actually are a lot of great watches in the shop right now. Oh, yeah. Um, that Movado, Datron? Dayton? Yeah, it's a great watch. I can't believe that hasn't gone That's a, It's a high beat movement uh, made in collaboration with Zenith, obviously El Primero. Mm -hmm. this, this is this is some great stuff. Again, if you guys sh shoot me an email at info at theoandharris.com uh, inquiring about a watch, you will get an answer directly from me. Uh, that is one of the roles of the company that I still do because yeah. uh, I don't really want to hand off sales emails to anybody else. I, I, I enjoy talking about watches um, with... Right. With folks you know, from all over the world, mm -hmm. you know. So anyway, shoot us an email at info at theowenharris.com with any inquiries regarding any of these watches currently in the shop. And uh, that's it. Next, next subject. Next subject. All right. So the first thing I want to run by you is now, not when this video is being posted, but yesterday Omega released their bronze gold Seamaster 300. Okay. Which I want to run by you for two reasons. One, bronze. And usually you see it kind of as a gimmick on cheaper watches. You see it on ores sometimes, but... Bronze gold yeah, is totally Tudor, different. Yeah, or Tudor, a lot of companies have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Bronze gold is something totally different, though. Mm. It's exactly what it sounds like. I thought it was kind of a modeling, or not modeling, marketing thing where Omega says, like, gold. They add gold into the word of bronze, just to make it sound fancier. But right. it is actually an alloy of, well, 50% copper, 37% gold, and small amounts of other noble metals like palladium and silver. Palladium being one of the most expensive metals in the world, commonly used in catalytic converters in cars. Of course, the catalytic converter. Uh, the fanciest part the, of the, the car. The part of the car that I'm most familiar with. Yeah. My dissertation in college <laughs> was, uh, on the was catalytic converter. mostly on the catalytic converter. Anytime a nice car Which I by. read at the Catalina Wine Mixer <laughs> last year. That was a Step Brothers reference for those of you guys who watch Step Brothers. Yeah, Christian's crazy with references. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's in my Tinder bio. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, best skill. Um, uh, passing movie quotes, quotes off as my own. It's not honest work, but it's a living. Sometimes Christian will say a reference that I'm just like, there's no way that was what he just said. <laughs> there's no way the that's, top. you're that clever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just, then my next thing, I think it's my hinge bio, the following thing, they, it says um, one social issue you're really uh, like passionate about. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, Referencing the refer- referencing the reference thing up top, Too I complex. referenced American Psycho and said um, uh, Sri Lanka. The, the, the six are killing like tons of Israelis over there, which is like the opposite of a social cause because it's not. I don't think it was even real. I don't See, <laughs> that's the thing. Too deep on the dating yeah. profiles. People yeah. are like, <laughs> people are like, you're. Weird. People want a comment that says like dogs in the office. Yeah, it's dogs like, in the office and my abs. Games, yeah. and my, focusing on my abs <laughs> and watches. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Watches have done a lot to get me. Believe it or not, I'm a successful watch dealer. I'm You're like, like, all right, okay, nice. all right, great. Okay, so yeah, this watch is interesting for a ton of reasons. One thing that's kind of cool is it's slimmer. They're going with the tapered bracelet. It's first master chronometer in the Seamaster 300. But what's really crazy is that material. And what I wanted to ask you basically. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on this? We have their moon gold, their Sedna gold, moon gold being their yellow gold, mm-hmm. Sedna being their rose gold. Now we have bronze gold, which is something in the middle. Yeah, I think, I think it's great. Period. And I, I've been a big fan of, of different brands having different tones of gold, right? Mm-hmm. I love that like AP's uh, a rose gold or red gold is different than Patek's, which is different than Rolex's. I, I've always liked that. Um, you know, uh, when it comes to like like pink gold was like kind of this first middle ground, this first mixed thing. I suppose all yellow golds in current production basically look the same, or, or rather, yeah. and, 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 and if they are, are different, that's not really talked about because I think the differences are so subtle. But mm-hmm. when it comes to pink, rose, whatever, it, it, it they're actually very, very different. To my recollection, uh, uh, Rolex's gold has, a, a rose gold has a more brown color, right, mm-hmm. more chocolatey, mm-hmm. whereas uh, AP is redder and mm-hmm. Paddock's is just softer altogether, I believe. Different uh, amounts of copper. Which is amazing, point. right. right, but, right. So then this is just taking that a step further, right? It's even doing more, mm. I, I suppose, bronze. And it, it, what's the color? How would you describe it? There's nothing pink about this. this is, yeah, yeah, there's this nothing. Is, this is, I would say bronze. Like it yeah, looks I like bronze. It's bronze. Yeah, right, right. I mean, it, it, I think it's very, very cool. Mm-hmm. I, think it's, I think it's a great, it's a, it's a very cool mixture. I'm all about it. Um, now, will, the, I think the question is, will people care enough that it's precious to pay precious prices, mm-hmm. right? What's the retail on this, do you know? I was going to ask you to guess. I know what it is. I mean, it, I, I would say this is a, you know, this is a $18,000 watch. 11200 oh, okay. Okay, 11200 So that's, well, it's only a little bit more than double what like a, a Tudor Black Bay Bronze is. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's four. <laughs> so that's eight. Eight and another three oh, is yeah, eleven. That's, so yeah. I guess I'm way out. So it's three times the Black Bay Bronze. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, but maybe it's three times the watch. I, I, I can't wait to see it. I mean, I loved all of Omega's new releases. We're going to talk yeah. about another one of them in a second. We're going to mm-hmm. talk about some other things in the middle. But um, I like this watch. Do you like it? Yeah, I do like it. I really like They Your basically give a show. Which, yeah, which, which is if I'm lying to Christian. Like, you're yeah. lying to. I'm like, Michael, are we, are we caught up on all the work? He goes, yeah, boss, we're all caught up on everything. <laughs> it's really good. I'm like, no, I'm well. Yeah, I'm messaging him at midnight. Hey, real quick, just want to get your opinions yeah. on this. But no, I think it's good. I think the... I think the bronze move is interesting. Like, I've always thought about rose gold, yellow gold, white gold. Mm-hmm. Now there's kind of yellow with a little bit more orange. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's different. I never really thought about the fact that there could be a fourth color of gold. Like, a distinctive fourth color of gold. D- d- I wonder if they're talking about it. Is, will this patinate? Like, I, I wonder if the... If- it will... Pat- what's cool about the bronze gold mix is, one, it'll not oxidize as fast mm-hmm. as just straight up bronze. It mm-hmm. won't get that like green kind of color to it. It will, I think, a tiny bit, but not as fast. And two, yeah. it's now hypoallergenic because of that gold mix. So it won't turn your like arm green or anything really? like that. They usually put like a PVD steel on the back that is the same color as bronze. Now they can just do it regular. This is the sandwich version though anyways, but... Interesting. Yeah, so that's By the way, cool. and we'll go back back to Omega in a second, but even look at this beautiful master chronometer, the uh, the Seamaster 300 in the blue. Mm-hmm. That's a great... Well, Omega's doing a great job. And I really like the move they did a page out of Panerai's book with the sandwich where they have the loom on the bottom yeah, and yeah, then yeah, the, the actual dial on top. It, yeah, a lot, a lot of depth. I, I, again, uh, Omega's one of the brands with the greatest potential for upward mobility. Mm-hmm. They've been realizing that potential for quite a while. This mm-hmm. is not news. I've said before uh, that I remember probably 2000, like 11, 2012, just getting into watches a little bit. And I was at like an Omega authorized dealer and, and, and the selection was slim. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it was kind mm-hmm. of sad and, and it, it wasn't great. Uh, and I remember the, the dealer, or the AD, who I had become not friends with, but acquaintances with mm-hmm. by bothering him because I was a young boy, very interested in watches. Yeah. And he said, oh, you know, if you stay interested in watches, you're going to see big things happen to this brand. And I didn't really take the word of the AD very seriously because, you know, he wasn't like the shining star of like, you know, like he didn't look to me like the wizard of watches. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, he wasn't you're not the wizard of watches. <laughs> You're he a, has a fraud. Crystal ball in back. <laughs> yeah. um, but but he was absolutely right, and um, he's absolutely right. Period. And, Omega and I, I think when we go talk about the other Omega later, it's time to bring up a good point about doing stuff like this. That's just not a re-release of something or another version of that with an improved movement, but nothing on the outside. Yeah, I think that you know one of uh, in an interview that I watched a long time ago with uh, an Italian um, entrepreneur, he was talking as the guy's name Lapo Elcan, Gianni mm-hmm. Agnelli's grandson, Gianni Agnelli being the the, the, the chairman of Fiat, of uh, Bio Ferrari, all these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, he said that the future. And going back, this is ten or fifteen years ago. The future is in customization, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the rich man and the poor man both want to express themselves through different items, whether that's a two million euro Ferrari or a ten million dollar boat or mm-hmm. a three dollar Bic lighter, mm-hmm. right? Uh, if a Bic lighter is a dollar, how many of the poor men, the regular folk, will actually pay $5 or $4 for a customizer, for a more interesting version of that? True. Even though you're, you're multiplying the, you know, the, the, the price by 400%, but right, right. maybe making, you're making it interesting enough for me to buy it. And I think that that's what Omega's done. It's, it's not about customization. They don't customize watches per se, but they're offering you know, these new offerings in so many different variations that are, you know, put it this way, they're just more likely to hit everyone on a different level. Yeah, exactly. You know, mm-hmm. ev- everyone is so much more likely to, to, to fall in love with something and they're doing a great job. Um, on to another Swiss manufacturer, this one an independent, not a mm-hmm. Swatch Group company, mm-hmm. Audemars Piguet. Yes, uh, the CEO uh, just announced that uh, in 2022, they will no longer be manufacturing the 15202, which was introduced by AP in 2012. I believe it was actually the first, or maybe the only one was before, it was the 5711, but um, one of the first um, you know, kind of like modern reissues of vintage classics. Mm-hmm. Of course, the Black Bay, you know, kind of came in, and so many other companies did the same thing. But uh, fifteen two hundred two has become a, a, a classic, a, a cultish watch. You can't get one in steel. Um, you, you, you know, you just can't get one. Yeah. Uh, they manufacture them in, in rose gold and yellow gold. I absolutely. Have they ever had any rose gold? Today? Yeah, rose gold with blue dial. My, I'm looking into the sky. <laughs> You're asking the watch I'm, wizard? I'm asking the watch. Uh, hello, watch wizard. Hello, it's, uh, me, it's me, again. Christian again. Um, this watch that they just released uh, in commemoration of their of their anniversary, mm-hmm. uh, this is in platinum. This actually is in platinum, Ew. not white gold. We were so text blind to the words white gold I in know. the title of the article we were reading. It's insane. Which, if you want to look at it from like a really intellectual perspective, right. how synonymous is the ice blue dial with platinum that we act both of us, mm-hmm. both smart people, I would go as far as to say, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, ignored the word steamrolled. white gold. Right? <laughs> completely steamrolled the, the word. The title white gold. is Audemars Piguet's yeah. Royal Oak in white gold. Yeah. And I was like, look at that platinum look watch. Look at that platinum watch. The ice put out. It's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is in platinum with a green uh, a f- foom, fume yeah. uh, dial. Uh, really, really beautiful. Everyone's doing green. This is a great watch. I've already seen some of them on Instagram. Uh, the biggest difference, I suppose, apart from the, the metal itself, mm-hmm. is um, is there is no petite tip, uh, tapisserie uh, pattern. Mm-hmm. It is just a flat, you know, kind of just sunburst flat. dial. Yep. But wow, what a beautiful watch. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. The price is one hundred and five thousand. You say very affordable. Very affordable. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm thirty nine millimeters, eight point one millimeters thick. I mean, or thin. That's yeah. just a beautiful sport. It's a perfect sports watch. Yeah. Well, yeah. Fifteen two two is a little. A big, too big for me because the bracelet does protrude out a little bit. Yep. Um, but but it's it's basically the perfect watch. I think the fifteen two hundred two is far better than the fifty seven eleven. Um, hmm. Like period end. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a phenomenal watch. There's three things I wanted to bring up real quick. Yep. One was just the quote the CEO of AP. Mm-hmm. I thought it was funny, so I wrote it down. Benny Amas. Benny Amas. See, I couldn't even pronounce it, so I, I, I wrote. I pronounced C- it wrong. See how I wrote CEO, so I yeah, wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. So you can tell, obviously, not an English speaker, but obviously the big huge I, I news. I definitely did. It's Ben, uh, ben, ben. You know what? It is Francois. Francois. Uh, okay. Yeah. He can pronounce my name wrong, too. He's a lovely, <laughs> he's a lovely guy from what I've heard. Hublot. 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 <laughs> Everybody yells at me. I don't know how to say it, so I'm pretty sure I got it finally. But anyways, so obviously, Paddock discontinued the 5711. And it was so big that he basically had to go to the New York Times with an article and be mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's being discontinued. I have that quote too, but 
Do you want to hear both? Yeah, I want to hear okay, both. Okay, okay. Sure. Paddock's well, president. Here. <laughs> like, tell me no, where no. Yeah, let's, tell let's me later. Skip over the quote and let's not share it with everyone. That's what <laughs> you like, know. Mike, tell me in the car later it's today. It's amazing. Paddock's president says we cannot put a single watch on top of our pyramid. He said, after all, Paddock has 140 models, including 26 other Nautili variants. If, if the Onion wrote this, they would have said we cannot put one watch at the top of our pyramid. Says CEO of company with one watch on top of the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> AP follows with the left hook. Yeah, and, and by the way, Paddock, you know, T- Terry Stern and the Stern family, they, they're obviously you're just le- they're legends, right? They, they mm-hmm. do such a fantastic job. Um, and, I, and I think that even they view it as unfortunate that the 7-Eleven is far more... <laughs> be- like, Paddock makes so many better watches than that. And they're like, that, like you guys still... Like, Look, we, we can't have that watch at the top of our pyramid. All the marketing people are like, uh, you kind of can. Are you really sure about yeah. that? I admire their integrity so much for not having produced, not having produced more. That's so like that's so impressive. I know. Uh, they yeah, they could have, but they didn't. But here's what he says. He says uh, we will have a victory lap. We will have a surprise final series of the 5711, and it is not what is left in the pipeline. Any thoughts? 5711. Yeah, that's Terry Stern. They're gonna have their victory lap. Yeah. I don't know. I I, I I thought it was already discontinued. I, I really don't know what's going to But his final words, how many there will be, I cannot give this information. It won't be enough for everyone who is waiting for one because that is not possible. But we will do our maximum. Isn't that insane? Un- so when they're asking the CEO of AP, he basically says, so another huge watch company said recently that they would stop making the 5711, which is Paddock. I love the way he speaks. Yeah, it's so it's not odd. Yeah, yeah, it's odd because, you know, it, he like didn't call out Paddock and then proceeded <laughs> to call. It's like saying, um, uh, I won't say which car manufacturer is going to stop making the G-Wagon, but... Like, it's Mercedes. It's Merce- like, <laughs> yes, sir. So he says, the 5711 is Paddock, so we could say there will be a new reference 15202 next year. So we will not make the 15202 ST, but that will be replaced by something else and for specific reasons that we will not talk about today. I have a feeling he's going to knock it out of the park. I mean, this, oh my God, this, yeah. this CEO, uh, Francois, I think that he fancies his legacy, the, the, the Code 1159. And mm-hmm. when it came out, a lot of people said it was horrible. And I think that he was an evil genius that was absolutely right. That Code 1159, I think... Uh, um, I don't think it was as perfect as the original, you know, Royal Oak. I don't think that the, the first iteration was as perfect as that first iteration. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't necessarily think that 100 years from now we're going to be looking for first generation 1159s. Mm-hmm. But I do think the Code 1159 is going to be one of the most sought after watches at some point. Most sought after watches on a leather strap at mm. some point. Yep, yep. Um, it's a brilliant, brilliant watch. This is a brilliant guy. Um, I think that he's anticipating a, a culture change at some point in the future. Mm-hmm. And I think that in that game, AP will be in front of Paddock. Um, because the 15202 Huge. in Huge. many ways, you know, trailed the 5711. Mm-hmm. But uh, not because it's not a better watch. I think it actually is a better watch. But um, So what so, do you think? 109,000? You, you buy this? Yeah, easy. The question I feel like it yeah, posed is, one, is this a... Paddock made the first move. AP does a copycat. Two, is it these two juggernauts that have an Onion article about them that, you know, they have one watch at their pyramid. Are they desperately being like, we need to... We need to get another watch before this trend runs out, if this trend runs out. Well, I mean, AP did it. I mean, a, a, you know, a, AP did the whole, you know, diversification, other watch thing. What will they replace this Royal Oak with? I don't, like, like you know why this is difficult? Because I think it's a perfect watch. I think that the 15 exactly. is perfect. Exactly, I agree. I could see another iteration of, of the 5711 coming, taking away the seconds hand maybe, uh, maybe changing up the dial a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, maybe a better color, maybe a little bit thinner. There are things that can be done uh, that I think that some people would argue would improve the watch. 15 I don't know how they you did change it. this up because it's already perfect. Um, yeah, I, I maybe maybe they get rid of it in. I mean, maybe they get rid of it in in steel, like like he had mentioned, and do in a similar like Rolex fashion when they release like only in precious for the first run. Mm-hmm. Maybe they do just you know white and yellow, and maybe in like crazy dial colors that could be you know it'd be a little bit you know boring, and then release the steel you know later on. Yeah, um, I don't see big changes coming to the fifteen two hundred two. I don't I don't see big changes honestly for either of these watches. Yeah, I see changes, not anything monumental. Again, it's just perfect. So why, why, how? Right. And 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 if if AP can improve this watch, sure. I, I'd be blown away. Yeah, I so really would. I, would. I mean, so I'd, would I. I would be. I'd be like, what? How did you? Where did you improve upon? But that's where genius comes in, right? That, True. That's 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 human genius. So we will see. But for now, I look at it. 
Just has a little bit of brilliant PR. Yeah. Rolex yeah, discontinues yeah. the sub submarine. Yeah, exactly. What? And yeah. um, we're releasing a new one. Yeah, you no. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um oh this is a great one too. This was their white gold with the salmon. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. a perfect um AP Anna wants this watch a hell of a lot. Oh just send it to her. Uh, just send it to her. I can you can't even get one. I mean even if I even if I wanted to buy it for yeah. myself, I like I couldn't. Um shout out to Anna, I bet you're watching this Anna. And it's still here. It's fifty five thousand dollars fifty five thousand four hundred dollars and I think they trade above a hundred. So Anis, if you want to split it, we'll go fifty five each. Uh, next conversation. Oh, a watch is under five hundred dollars. Yep. What do you think, Michael? What do I think about that fact in general? No, like what watches under five thousand dollars do you like? Oh, well, first off, my favorite watch of all well, not my favorite watch of all time, but the SKX, which is now discontinued to the Seiko five greatest watch of all time just that dive watch simple easy automatic seiko bulletproof that doesn't do a single thing for me i can't believe that that's Nothing. insane i was going to talk about the alpinist reissue today and i was like you know what christian doesn't like seiko i it just won't do it don't like it i don't like them at all <laughs> and, and you know it's funny when people uh ask me like on like, people ask me like questions like on the spot whatever when i see watch people they're like what do you think about the alpinist what do you think about seiko and you say shut up no no i always say like they're great from everything that I know, which is very little. They're fantastic watches, and you'd be hard pressed to find a better watch dollar for dollar. Yeah, but you're not going to find a spokesperson in me because I'm just not passionate about them. You're right, right. That's it. I mean, period, end. So greatest deal of all time, though. I think mm -hmm. it's just a do anything. Are you going to throw up? Yeah. Why are you still talking? <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I like marathon. Mm -hmm. Right, I think that these are awesome watches. The mar marathon, like lands wa land watches, whether in quartz or in mechanical, mm -hmm. from two hundred to like five hundred dollars, uh, you can get a fantastic watch. Marathon, you know, was was uh, army issue or Allied forces issue from nineteen forty one, and even beyond the fact that they have actual legitimate, you know, historical importance. I think that they're awesome looking watches. I love that they're small. I love the dial configuration. I love the I love everything about these watches. I would buy this watch in quartz in two seconds. I would not hesitate. I love the single past strap. I love that. It's better than the NATO, I think. Mm -hmm. um, everything about this watch I think is awesome. Uh, Swatch is another great example. Swatch is there incredible. There are a million ways to express yourself through Swatch. Mm -hmm. I would love to do a marketing campaign for Swatch. Oh, yeah. It'd be awesome. That would, oh, that yeah, would excite yeah. me so... Like, if you talked about, like, most exciting potential clients in the future, mm -hmm. you know, you have, obviously, obviously, AP would be, like, this brilliant, this amazing thing. Followed Vash by Casio. Yeah, right. Like, Vacheron Concept. But Casio, we've talked I about know, Casio I know. I love concepts. Casio. We've talked about Casio concepts before, and we have amazing ideas. Mm -hmm. Swatch is another one. Mm -hmm. So, it's not so much about you know uh, uh, how expensive or how you know how, you know how much caviar and champagne can we eat at the, hop, the top of a you know, Swiss village. It's more about you know who has the most interesting stories. Yeah, right. Uh, right. And, and Casio and, and Swatch, they they do. I mean, I, I have a, these jellyfish, these Swatch jellyfish. Mm -hmm. They're awesome watches. Incredible. Yeah. They're, they're all new old stock and they are available at the Owner's Watch Shop. And I did curate them myself. Uh, so take a look. You know, well under five hundred dollars, you mm -hmm. can just get this amazing little piece of of just personality and funk and I think that they're amazing. Did I, did I tell you I went to the tailor recently? I did tell you this. I went to the tailor recently and I basically told her I work in watches, like vintage watches, all this. She was like, oh, cool, cool, cool. She rolls up her sleeve. She has um, like the swatch measuring tape watch. I have one at home. Oh, you do? Yeah. And she goes, where can I get one of these? And I was like, well, that's actually a really rare swatch. Like, I'm shocked that you're wearing it. <laughs> you know, you should put it in a box. Put it. Oh, yeah, I have one. And she was like, I just, I don't care. I just need another one because this one's not working. Bring it to her. You have it? Yeah. Okay, I literally well. have it at home. It's not for me. It's for the shop. I just never listed it. Okay, so. I'll give it to her, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, not give it to her. Pay, pay, pay <laughs> yeah. me if... Uh, <laughs> yeah, pay me a premium. <laughs> cash on delivery. Give it to me. Yeah. Do you have a wallet on you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so those are great watches. Uh, we just got an email from Corniche last week. Corniche is a, is a micro brand. Uh, you know what's funny is the reason that I looked at the email was because I've gone back and forth with them on, on messaging a couple times and this video was not sponsored by Cornish. They're not paying me a dollar for this. I've just kind of been fond of them for a while, right? Yeah. When I got into watches um, in 2000, like I said, 2011, 2012, but really when I got into watches professionally in 2015, um, not, it was more, it was really more of a hobby, you know, but, mm -hmm. but, but um, I saw the big problem, the big problem that I saw as a college student and a watch lover was that the affordable market, the mm -hmm. college market was dominated by like 
Alibaba, Dropship, Daniel Wellington, crap, and VMT, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yep. I hated it. Um, I, I hated it for a lot of reasons. And, and, I, and I, I wanted to fix that problem. Ultimately, I did not fix that problem. I just became, Cheap vintage watches, right? Well, that, that's was what I, right that's, that was the original. Yeah. That was the original you know, idea, but it was just not, it was just not doable. Mm-hmm. But Corniche was the first company that I said, they are fixing that problem. Um, I guess their chronograph is $425. Their regular uh, time-only watch is $365. So you know, they're triple the price of an MVMT. Um, but I mean... I don't know, 10x, 15x, better in quality. Say, way yeah, more than Yeah, look at triple. the construction quality. They just sent me a chronograph. Again, they did not pay for this video, so I don't care what you guys think. Take, take a look at the book quality. Oh, and it's a good I'm size. Get that, get that off. Yeah, they're... Um, you know, listen, not every watch is going to be, you know, several thousand dollars and several, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I think this is a great watch. Yeah. Mecha it's heavy. Quartz. Mecha Quartz watch. And the whole reason this conversation came up by is because uh, we did a review on Furlan, or talked about Furlan Mari last week, which is a uh, which is a micro brand that raised a million dollars like in 24 hours or something like that on on. Where was it? On uh, Kickstarter. Kickstarter. So Corniche was like, hey guys, remember us? And it was funny because I talked about Corniche on one of the first episodes of, at the time, the series was called Ask TNH. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we never had an official relationship, but I was just a fan of theirs. And yeah. they were nice to me, and that's it. This watch is awesome. Yeah, I would wear great. this watch, like, out to dress watch, or even just regular. No, for sure. Like, I mean, it's, it's got a lot of 5970 vibes going. Um, I, I think it's great. It even has, like, kind of like a, a 1815, you know, dial a little bit going. Um, yeah. I love it. I love this watch. I'm going to wear it. You should. I mean, not this moment. I'm wearing a Breguet right now, in all fairness. This new uh, Breguet. My new Breguet. I, I did buy a Breguet. Um, we are going to be working with Breguet on a project upcoming. And um, to celebrate the project, I bought myself a Breguet. A nice celebration. A nice celebration of a good project. Yes. Cheers. 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 Cheers to Breguet. Cheers to Breguet. Cheers to the Queen. Yes. It's great. Thank you, Corniche. Again, not sponsored. But if you guys are looking for like a watch under 500 bucks, uh, take a look at Corniche because they're they're yeah. actually really great. They're nice folks. Okay. So next topic. Um, this is a cool watch. This is uh, Omega's new yes. Seamaster 300M Black Black. Mm-hmm. Not just black, <laughs> but Black Black. And uh, that's a dumb name, Omega. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. You put all the work into the you watch. Put, like, then... It could have been like the 300 down midnight. Or, no. You know, whatever. Uh, but you made the black black. And that's a little silly, but... Even the article makes fun of it and says, why not call it the black black black? Yeah. <laughs> but this is a great watch. Omega did a great job. Oh, yeah. And, and the reason... Because this, re- this reminds me of like... Um, Kind of like a like a clothing kind of like challenge. In if you can stick with one color throughout an entire outfit, like mm-hmm. that means that you really have chops mm-hmm. because that means you were able to play with texture really really well. Right. Um, because if you just wear a bunch of clashing textures, blacks or blues or anything, you look stupid. Right. Um, right. But this is awesome. They really mastered yep. that like design thing from the bezel and the case, the bracelet. It really everything about this watch is great. The only downfall to this watch, as I see it, mm-hmm. is it, you know it's so tough. Mm-hmm. That the average guy will probably have a hard time wearing this. I agree. I think you need to be very cool to wear this watch. Right. And if you're just an average guy like me, you're probably just better off with a regular, you know, Seamaster Professional in black. Mm -hmm. You know, just probably just look like it fits better. Right. But there are a whole lot of folks out there that can carry this watch. They can wear the black black. They can wear the black 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 black. Yeah, yeah. And this watch is is just awesome. I am 100% about it. I love that watch. I wish it was not forty two point five millimeters because it's too big for me. But right. also, I'm not the kind of kind type of guy that can even wear that watch. So I guess it's not big of a deal. This is another marketing campaign I'd love to be a part of. I, oh I, yeah, we we already have a relationship with Omega, so I think I'm gonna shoot them an email because this is like this is a great That's incredible. potential campaign. Yeah, and you know what's really interesting? Or not interesting? I guess it's more funny. The biggest concern for this watch is fingerprints because it's all blacked out and everything. So even in this article it says Oh, is that a Omega thing? yeah, Omega went to great lengths like the bezel they did in this you can see it's like a the gradient, grainy, yeah. gradient thing just to avoid fingerprints and I was like that's so funny we're making things so nice that like our grubby human oil is getting yeah, out of yeah. it. Like we don't want to see that. Yeah, get your get your poor fingers off my cashmere. <laughs> yeah. um, no, this is awesome. Great, great job, Omega. Fantastic stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, another dive watch. AP yes. released their uh, an update to their diver uh, offshore. What do you think about this watch in green and in gray? I actually like that watch a lot. Yeah, so I've been I. really into strap or watches with integrated rubber straps. I think yeah. that's a great look. That's the full thought. That's the full thought. No, the thing I was going to stem off of there is yeah. the Mr. G watch that just came out. Looks very similar to that for three thousand. Yeah, that's a it's Casio, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, I'm into Casio. I want to do something. I just I didn't click on that article. Yeah. Well, also three thousand dollars for a Mr. G. Even though it's premium, I'm still like 
Yeah. I'd rather spend how much is this? This is twenty five thousand. Five thousand <laughs> on the uh, diver. This yeah. is a cool watch, man. It is. Cool. I think they did a really good job. That's just a cool looking. And this watch. is so not me. This is yeah. so not me. And I wonder. Obviously, this is a competitor. This is like a direct competitor to the Aquanaut. Right? Yeah, right, right. And I wonder if you'll be able to get these. Like, I wonder if I can wa- if someone could walk into an AP boutique and buy this. Not today, of course, but right. but in the near future. Yeah, um, that is interesting. That would, like, this is. I mean, arguably just as cool for a lot of people as the as the Aquanaut. I actually like that better. I think the yeah. aggressive flat color looks great. No, it, it does. I mean, I'm more of an Aquanaut guy just because it's more elegant. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, I have elegant wrists. Right. But I think this is a great looking watch. And uh, the proportions are good. I mean, what is the watch? 42 millimeters? 42, yeah. yeah. 42 is a good size. Like, if you showed me this watch, I would have I would have said, okay, 44, whatever. 42, yeah. a lot of guys, you know, most most guys, not me, but most guys can carry, I think, a 42 yeah. with this watch. I think it's great. I, I think they too. did a great job. You know, it, it's kind of like the old, you know, not the, not the, the old adage. No, yeah, but yeah. like the, um, the remark, the, the speculative remark about Gerald Genta saying that AP killed his, mm-hmm. you know, the Offshore, yeah, the right, offshore. right. And, and in many ways, he's right, or, or if, if that was true, the right, because yeah. the offshore was a kind of a perversion uh, of of the Royal Oak. The, the, the most beautiful part about the Royal Oak was that it managed to be both uh, uh, industrial and elegant, mm-hmm. and the offshore had no elegance; it was just, just industrial. industrial, right? Um, but I suppose you know, removing yourself from that, you know. The, I, I wouldn't call this watch elegant. It's it's just I no, can't no, use that word. It's, but uh, it is fine. Yeah, it's aggressive. Though. It's it basically it's like Joe Genta started a movement that he didn't like after he made it. He was right. like, no, 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 it has to balance. And AP mm. was like, no, it doesn't. Yeah, like, it doesn't. and I think AP's right. You know what I mean? Like, AP that's might be right. I mean, you know, it's funny. It's like, and I'm conflicted about it. Like, to me, only. It, to be a great Royal Oak, mm-hmm. you've got to be both elegant and and industrial. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be a great offshore diver, maybe the bar is a little bit lower on the elegant side. Maybe it's maybe it's you know obviously industrial and and um, I don't know what the word is, but but this isn't as bombastic you know as as the prior offshores. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, exactly. This isn't as obnoxious and horrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is actually quite nice. Yeah. So I think they did a great job. Cyclops date window on the offshore. What are your thoughts? Is there a Cyclops? Look at that, yeah. Oh, there's magnification there? Yeah, not, oh, you know, not really Cyclops, but... Oh, yeah, there is magnification there. It's interesting. I didn't, even, I didn't even notice that. Okay, next subject something that's been coming up a lot, which is eBay's authenticity guarantee. Mm-hmm. How familiar are you with, with this? Briefly. I basically just saw any watch over $2,000 now is going to get authenticated by eBay. Goes yeah. to eBay Center, authenticated, then to you. So obviously eBay is, is you know working awfully hard to be taken seriously in the watch space. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, to me, the question is, which watch space? The watch space is so segmented. True. You know, right here, you've got your photo of you know kind of a modern you know tag Carrera, and then a you know semi vintage whatever. This is like a fourteen oh six hour or something like that. Yeah. You know, Submariner. Um, but but it gets difficult once you get into vintage. Um, I purchase from eBay very very rarely, but I have purchased from eBay. I have mm-hmm. received two watches from this authenticity guarantee. Mm-hmm. Um, one watch had a, a, a fake bracelet that they spotted. Okay, that's that's fine. Thank you for okay. spotting that. Um, uh, and then the other watch, they missed a, 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 a reprinted dial. They missed so, it? Yeah, they missed it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so, you know, I think that if you're going, I think that eBay would be better off choosing or, 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 or confining the watches that they are even open to authenticating mm-hmm. and, and, and tightening that a little bit yep. so they can have a higher success rate. Right. Once you go into vintage, it becomes very difficult. You really need, you know, professionals. Yep. Uh, I think that they're going to be missing big stuff here eventually. And I think that it's going to be very, very expensive to to True. make those mistakes. I mean, you ordered um, two watches, they missed one. Right, yeah. yeah. That's and, a horrible ratio. And think about it. I mean, you know, I, you know, on these expensive Rolexes, you know, mm-hmm. 10,000, 20,000, 100, you know, 50,000. Let's, let's, let's say even, you know, let's say even $30,000 is a good number. I think that people would buy a watch on eBay for $30,000. Mm-hmm. Um, if it has a reprinted dial mm-hmm. and eBay doesn't catch it and then I get told that it's a reprinted dial by an auction house, Three years later, right. what is eBay going to do for me? My feeling is nothing because they're going to assume it's been tampered with. Yeah, right. Because after you know that 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 sticker is taken off, eBay no longer is responsible for the watch. Yeah. So so, I think that they are sticking their nose where they shouldn't at the mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. It, you know, on, on some of these you know smaller segments of the market, mm-hmm. um, can they authenticate a modern Breitling? I think they can. That that makes sense to me. Omega, yes. Vintage is just a very very tricky world and. 
I have a bad feeling about it. What's also interesting is the super clones and everything, the Rolex super clones yeah. and stuff like that. You you have people being like, you can barely tell these are different, and you have to take a very very close look. Like yeah. there could become there could be an entire new market. Like obviously, if you see it's coming from this weird place, it might be weird, but. You know, oh my God, great deal on a sub. eBay yeah. says great, gone, yeah. fake. No one ever knows. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that on the, from the seller's perspective, this makes it a little bit safer because uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to shipping a Rolex directly to a customer, you're shipping it to eBay, who then guarantees that you did send them X. Uh, right, whereas right. Whereas if That's you're selling true. through eBay as the seller, and the, and the buyer opens up a watch and says, you know, this is this is. Why uh, this is not as represented, whatever it might be, they could do a swap, mm -hmm. and uh, that happens. I've I've, I've heard oh, of yeah. people, you know, uh, shipping a watch out, reputable people, people that I know, shipping out a watch and getting back a watch in return. That is very very different than the watch that they shipped out. Mm -hmm. So that I, I assume that, that would not happen through this. But uh, to me, this seems more of a the, the common perspective is that this is more of a, a buyer service than a seller service. But may, maybe maybe it's the opposite. Maybe this is really more for sellers. Yeah, I mean, you know? and in a bigger way, it's just a statement on the current state of the the watch industry right it's that big no fakes you know? no fraud no <laughs> doubt i mean well there will be some fakes there will right. be some fraud and there and there there's, is always doubt, there's doubt. yeah so right their, their tagline there i don't think is, is <laughs> they could refine it a little um, bit if they um yeah i mean I, i'm interested to see how this plays out i don't think it's not going to go anywhere no that's for sure watches have been sold on ebay since ebay started basically right right um but i'm interested in seeing you know how this uh, evolves or, or rather devolves Agreed. There's going to be a scam at some point, a big one. When I when I say a scam, I don't mean five hundred. Like a scandal $2, type deal. I think there's going to be a big, heavy, you know, hundred thousand or whatever dollar scandal mm -hmm. at some point with this. Right. That's it. That's it. Folks, thank you so much for watching. Michael, thank you for talking about watches with me. Of course. If you guys like watches, go ahead and subscribe to our channel at Theo and Harris, and like this video if you did. Cool. See it.